Back in 2012, the Toyota GT86 was launched. It was praised for its rear wheel drive, lightweight chassis, and back to basics format. But eight years on, is it worth buying a used Toyota GT86? Join me in today's video where we're going to be talking through the running costs, the specifications, the purchase price, and my experience of buying a used GT86. Hey up everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you do enjoy this type of content, remember to subscribe, but let's get into it. If you thought that buying an affordable sports car was a little bit out of reach, then the GT86 will be a breath of fresh air. It was created by enthusiasts, for enthusiasts, and for a long time, a lot of manufacturers have been adding to their cars. More power, more weight, more safety devices, more electronics, and ultimately, a higher price. Toyota decided to go back to basics with the Hachi Roku, which translates as 86. There were four main principles when they were designing this particular car. And them four principles are lightweight, modest naturally aspirated power, rear wheel drive and cheap to buy. Lap times weren't being considered with the GT86, there were no test drives around the Nürburgring, they weren't particularly bothered of the times that the car produced, it was more about driving enjoyment. So Toyota have been incredibly precise when it's come to this particular car and the numbers that it produces, something that we've become accustomed to with Japanese engineering. So let me talk you through some of the numbers of this particular car. 2000cc engine, around 200 brake horsepower, a smidge over 200 newton meters of torque, and shifting a total weight of just over 1,200 kilograms. So let's talk about the AE86 then, a massive inspiration for this particular car and a legend in the JDM community today. The AE86 lived by very much the same principles of the GT86, that being lightweight chassis, rear wheel drive, naturally aspirated power, and an absolute hoot to drive. And it just so happens that the GT86's engine stroke and bore is 86 millimeters, as is the diameter of the chrome tipped rear exhaust pipes which the car breathes from. If you wanted to pick up a GT86 new, you would have to pay a smidge under 26,000 pound and you have the option of three specification levels. Them specification levels can be distinguished by the back of the car and more specifically the rear wing. So when it comes to the three specification levels that you can purchase on the GT86, first up is the Primo. Now the Primo is a relatively basic spec, you don't get this deck spoiler, it is just a normal trunk. And moving to the interior of the car, you don't get things such as a touchscreen navigation system or the heated seats. It is a relatively basic spec but they do come in at a lower price point, however I think these were first available on the 2017 facelift. Second up in the specification list we've got the GT spec or the premium spec which is what my car is in. You do get this deck lid spoiler here which adds just a nice little touch to the car and it is useful for aerodynamics as well so there's a double purpose there. You also get things such as a half leather and Alcantara seats in the middle of the car along with the touchscreen navigation system and the heated seats. The third and final spec level that you can get for the GT86 outside of the special editions is the aero edition. Now you can tell this car purely because it has quite possibly the biggest wing that ever came out of a standard car factory and looks like something out of Fast and the Furious. There are a lot of people who like it, myself included, there are also a lot of people who don't like the aero car purely because of the brashness of the way it looks. So when you look at the interior of the GT86 you may wonder what all the fuss is about. There's no heavyweight, high quality plastics in here and you'll notice that when you start driving the car that there is a lack of soundproofing. The cabin is by no means luxurious but what it lacks in luxury it makes up for in detail. From the soft touch knee pads at either side of the driver's knees to protect your knees from when you're driving to the little mould in the centre of the dash here that shows you exactly where the middle of the car is and that will help when you're on track or when you're driving rather erratically. Directly in front of the driver is a simple three cluster instrument pod. Pair that with a great driving position and you have a petrol head's dream. Moving to the rear of the car, the GT86 is technically classed as a 2 plus 2, but forget about having any average size human in there. It's decent for a dog, it's decent for a small child, or even just to throw your jacket on. But for anybody that's above 5 foot 9, 5 foot 10, it becomes incredibly difficult to get people in the back, especially considering that I'm 6 foot 1 and my seat is nearly touching the rear seats. Fold the back seats down though and you've got enough space to fit a trolley jack and four wheels and tyres so ideal if you're going on the track then. So we've talked a little bit about the history of the GT86, some of the engine specifications and the interior of the car. The next thing we're going to do is take it out on the road and see what it's like to drive.
So one of the first things that you'll notice when you jump into the GT86 is that the car is extremely direct and agile. Every single little steering input or throttle input that you put into the car, it responds to. The second thing that you'll notice is that the 2 litre boxer engine, which is a Subaru FA20 engine, needs to be revved. And it needs to be revved hard for it to perform. If you are thinking of purchasing a GT86, I wouldn't just stick by the dealership test drives that you get offered. I would try and go on a forum, a Facebook group, and get somebody who has one of these cars to take you out in it, so you can really feel how the car works, how it performs, and what the acceleration is like when you do get that engine spun up. And talking of revving the car, once you do get it going, it revs all the way up to a 7450 rpm and this can be further enhanced by ecu tuning just a quick note about ecu tuning and modifications for this car if that's the type of thing that you're into there is a massive variety of parts and suppliers that you can get in with with the gt86 for example over here in the uk we've got fensport a very well renowned garage alongside tuning developments and amber performance who all know these cars inside out if you are looking for something a little bit more exotic you can get overnight parts from japan and if you do get that reference kudos to you but you have companies like hks greddy and blitz who all do parts and kits for this car over in the usa there are quite a few supplies for performance related goods and also some rather aggressive aerodynamics when we talk about the general position and ride of this car you do sit incredibly low down as you would expect with the submall sports coupe but the driving position is absolutely perfect the, the pedals are in a great position and the steering wheel isn't too big so you tend to have quite a bit of control over it this particular model is sat on tyne springs so it is a little bit harsher than the standard model but the standard models do come a little bit stiffer than your average car but as with everything with the gt86 you do tend to get quite a bit of rattles and bumps in the car anyway if you're looking at purchasing a gt86 you've got two gearbox options with these cars you've got the six speed manual and the automatic the automatic isn't a bad shout and it is a preferred for quite a lot of people but to get the full driver experience from this car you do need to have the manual the manual gearbox is absolutely sublime you get nice quick notchy gear changes and pair that with a weighted shift knob and it feels absolutely brilliant i don't know if you guys can see this outside of here but it's an incredibly rainy day here in the uk and on the standard tires which by the way are shared with the prius you can have an incredible amount of fun with the car it will slide absolutely everywhere whether traction control is on or off if you like me and i prefer my car to have a little bit more grip i've put some eight and a half inch width michelin pilot sport 4 tires on there with some new wheels and even in the wet it's very hard to break grip but the upside of that is when it does break grip you do know exactly when it's going to do it and you can control it incredibly well if you put a few choice modifications onto this car if that's your thing you'll either end up with a very very good drift missile or a brilliant track weapon we've just been talking a little bit about revving the car out i'm just approaching a tunnel so listen to this This car never fails to put a smile on my face, honestly. It is such a good drive. The engine, when it gets revving up, sounds absolutely insane and it just screams. So for those of you that don't know, this is my personal car. So some of you might be sat there thinking I'm gonna be incredibly biased. That's not the case though. I've been driving eight years. I've had 16 cars in them eight years. And this car by far is the most fun to drive. Whether that be it sliding around corners or whether it be the engine absolutely screaming, it just never fails put a smile on this face if there's one thing that you guys do after this video please go and drive one of these cars either go and test drive one at a dealership or if you're local to leeds in the uk ask me i'll come i'll happily take you one out because i absolutely love this car so when it comes to buying a used gt86 what does the market look like at the moment well at this very point you can actually pick one of these cars up for sub ten thousand pounds which is an incredible number for such a capable car the only issue is when you're looking at the sub £10,000 is that you're going to be looking at a car that has a few thousand miles more than the other examples and you would be looking at something a bit older in the range, most likely a 2012 or a 62 plate. I picked up this car for just a little bit under £14,000. It had 29,000 miles on the cloth when I got it. It was in relatively good condition and it's also in the pearl white paintwork, which is also a desirable paint code. So to wrap things up relatively quickly then, could the GT86 be a better car? And yes, of course it could. It could be quieter it could be faster it could be grippier and it also could have some more of that touchy feely soft touch plastics inside of the car and more soundproofing 
But the thing is about that, it will take away from the bare bones recipe that Toyota intended with the GT86. And the thing is about this car is it's a rare car that comes around once in a decade that really puts driver enjoyment and driver focus above everything else. And considering that you can buy one of these cars for under £10,000, I think the smiles per miles value of this car cannot be beaten whatsoever. And that's it for today's video guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. Remember if you have, subscribe to the channel, like this video and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll catch you next time.